All right, appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation again, and in this Spark Spotlight video, we're going to be going over your different export options in Spark. So, and what I mean by export is when you click export, you're basically telling Spark what you want to go into your actual report, or uh, in some cases, your digital work file. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start at the top. Now, this first section up here, uh, as you can see, it has it's specifically related to what's going into your sales grid or in some cases your rental grid. It's basically your subject and your comps that you loaded into Spark. And then this section down here has to do with what's going to go into your 1004MC and uh, anything related to your market conditions analysis. Okay, so we're going to start at the top here. First option, add Google Street View of property to report. Now this option you want to be careful with. Do not turn this on unless the following applies to you. At least I don't recommend it. You're free to do what you want, but just be careful. So if you load data into Spark before you do your inspection, and if you're using Total for mobile, then this option could be useful to you. Otherwise, I don't recommend using it. So what you would do essentially is you would load your comps and subject into Spark before you go on your inspection, and then you're using Total for mobile, so you've got uh, on your mobile device, your tablet or whatever it is, you have your report up and you're going to have your your comps and your subject and you're also going to have the photos which can be loaded in from Google Street View through Spark um, and so it makes it easier as you're driving up to the property you can see what the property is going to actually look like before you get there and then it makes it easier sometimes to find it and take a picture of it and then when you take a picture of it you just overwrite the photo that Spark put in with your photo. Uh, now that's when it's useful and helpful if you don't if those two things don't apply to you you load in data after your inspection then this will actually overwrote overwrite i should say your photo that you took so you want to be really careful only do this if you're doing it before your inspection not after and it even pops up with a warning so if you accidentally click on this it's going to say hey be careful this could overwrite your photos so you know to turn it off if you need to. Okay, the next one down is add photo addenda for the imported comps. Pretty self-explanatory. If you're importing nine comps and you only have comp photo pages in your report for comps one through six, then it will load the comp seven, eight, and nine photo page into your report for you. It'll load in whatever photo pages you need, uh, and that's essentially the way it works. If you're ever getting duplicate photo pages loaded into Spark, like it's loading in a comps one through three photo page when you already have a comps one through three photo page in, uh, that has to do with a setting on the grid side. In fact, I'll just show you real quick. Click over onto the grid, so you're looking at your uh, Spark grid right here, and it's click on the gear icon, general grid settings. It has to do with this very first setting right here. Just make sure you have this default picture size set to whatever size comp photos you use in your report. As long as this is set to what you already use in your actual existing report, then you won't have that problem with duplicate photos. Okay, let's go ahead and get back over to the 1004MC, click export again. Now the next one down, include work file property report. This will load into your digital work file the PDF report that Spark creates that has all the MLS and all the public records data we have on each of your on your subject and each of your comps. If you don't want that, you can simply check it and turn it off, uh, or and you can choose to have it loaded in with maps or without maps for each of the properties, and that's that. Okay, next section down. Now we're getting to the market conditions information. So first option is where do you want to put your comments for the 1004MC? Do you want them in your 1004MC or in a separate text addenda? Or do you want them ex totally excluded? You don't want them at all. Just uncheck it in that case. Next one, include selected charts in report. If you do want your charts included in your report, then you leave that checked. And these are the charts that you selected to include. By default, you have six charts that are automatically selected to go into your report if you don't do any customization in Spark. If you want to see what those charts are, you just click this button right here, see selected charts and it shows you those six charts right here. So you can quickly see what's going into your report. If you don't want one or more of these in your report, all you do is you uncheck it, and that will not put it, that will make it so it does not go into your report. And when you're all set, just hit go back. And now the next one down, include MC data in primary forms in 1004MC. If you have that checked, that basically means that all this data, the one unit housing, the top of page two numbers, and all the numbers in the 1004MC, along with any check boxes you might have marked, are all going to go into your report. If you don't check that box, this one right here, then those won't go into your report. Last one is include work, fi work file market condition reports. 
essentially Spark is going to create a PDF of every single chart and every single data table that you had access to to analyze and it's going to load those all into that PDF. So, you know, if in a year or two years down the road you need to go back and look at that data, whether to defend yourself or for whatever reason, then it's all there in your digital work file. Okay, and then when you're all set, make sure your options are how you want them. So I'm going to switch one just to show you when you do change anything, Spark will save that setting for next time. So once I hit go, it'll save these settings and use these the next time you use Spark. So I'm going to hit go, and now I've started the process of preparing all the information to load it into my report. So you save it. Now your internet browser may look a little different. Uh, I'm using Google Chrome and it pops up with this message. I've chosen to be able to change the name of the file and save it as a different name. Yours may not pop up with this window, it just may automatically do this and show you this file down here. If you're using Internet Explorer or maybe Microsoft Edge, it might pop up with a little thing here that says open or run. Just click open and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to open that file. Now this is handed over the data to all of mode at this point. So this is the all of mode data wizard. I'm going to choose, you have the options of creating a new report or merging into an existing report. I'm sure Nearly all of you are going to choose this option. And now, I just want to explain briefly the difference between these two. Uh, keep the data in my open report, but merge everything else. I'm going to talk about this first option. What that means, I just have a little sample thing up here that's kind of fake, but what that means is if you have any open fields, Spark is going to be able to load that data in no problem. If you have fields where the data already is in there, then Spark cannot load that data in. All mode does not let it. So uh, let's go look at the comps. Well, there's no comps in this report, but if there were a comp in this right here, but no comp here, it would not be able to overwrite comp 1 if you choose that option. It'll only put in where there's blank fields. If you have a template report, so you have some of these fields pre-filled out, that's the perfect option to choose. Um, this one right here keep the data in my open report, because what you do is in your template, you set up the fields that you always want to be the same, and you only let, and that only lets Spark put in the extra data. So that's an ideal option to choose if you use templates. If you, on the other hand, use you merge from prior reports, then you want to use this option because what this option does is let me show you. Well, first of all, let's look back at that page. If you had comps in here, it would just straight overwrite them. It says replace the data in my open report. It just overwrites it. And then the same when we were looking at the uh, 1004MC, it wouldn't just load in these. Whoops, I'm sorry. These first five. Uh, rows of data right here. It would actually load in all of the rows of data. Even the ones that had data in it, it would just overwrite all of that. So if you merge from an existing report, you want to choose this option. Just be careful because it will overwrite all your data in your report. Um, and then if you choose this option, it will. It does not let all mode overwrite any of the data in your report. So if you have anything in a field at all, then it does not let Spark fill out that field. Uh, okay, and that's it. And then when you're all done, you just hit import. By the way, the keep the sketch in my report, it doesn't matter if you choose that or not. Spark doesn't have anything to do with your sketch, so it won't overwrite anything in your sketch. And now you can see it's loaded in this data. So all this data is loaded in. I chose merge, so it did not overwrite those these bottom fields right here. And then I'll just real quickly show you the work file as well. So you can see that it loaded in that property report for the sales comparison approach section, and then the market conditions report and addenda. And this is essentially, like I was explaining, every single piece of data that you had access to and every table of data as well. Okay, that's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching.